by the Minnesota State Arts Board through the legacy funding. And it's so important for artists. It, it completely enabled me to be able to really go at this project and really go deep with it. And it allowed me that, um, it was just essential like for me to be able to do this. And so I narrowed the scope down instead of every unincorporated town I ran into, <laughs> into uh, 33 unincorporated towns. And I focused um, my area actually into where Region 2 Arts Council serves. So Hubbard County, Beltrami, Clearwater, <clears throat> uh, Monoman, and Lake of the Woods. I identified the uh, unincorporated towns on Wikipedia. I would love to know if there is a place that <laughs> like, identifies unincorporated towns. Of course, I ran into a ton of them, like way more while I was photographing, but uh, really needed to maintain, like just to keep focused on the ones that I was doing. Um, so I wrote the grant, received the grant, and kind of how I rolled then from there is I would go camping in the, these areas um, from three to five days. So from Lake of the Woods, I think I was there for about seven days, and I would camp out and then go and take photographs during the day. And that really allowed me to be able to get a better sense of the area and place and immerse myself in it a little bit more. Um, another way, kind of how I rolled and I found what was happening was I'd go into these places and then I would photograph a little bit, kind of scope the place out, and then I was able to find um, like usually a place of commerce. So uh, a lot of times there were gas stations or a general store. And I would go in and talk to people and it was so cool. People were so sharing about their town's history. They were very proud of it. And they were very close to their histories, which was interesting coming from Des Moines or Iowa City. I know I was way more further removed from my history. Um, you know, I kind of like knew a little bit, but they're very like close to their histories and you know, they would share personal stories. So that would really help inform me and help guide me to what I was photographing, whether it was a historical building that was there or um, to like, you could kind of pick up just from the areas, like these people are very resilient. You know, these are re more remote areas. There's not like a lot of our common day conveniences, you know, that are around us. We know this because we live up here. You know, we do have like convenience things around us here, but um, not a lot. So anyway, uh, a few of the places that I went into, which Greg and Amy, she wish they were here. This guy that fell off, he really wanted to be talked about. So um, this was a general store, uh, or actually the country store. And it's super cool if you guys get a chance to come up here and look. Uh, Greg has, it's, you can get like condiments and things like that, but at the same time it has intertwined in there different local artists and crafts and things like that were going on. In Linda's shop, this was over in Circle. Um, this is the only place of commerce, by the way, in Elida and in Circle. Like nothing else exists um, around there. And these are really kind of passerby towns. So like if I'm driving up to Lake of the Woods, you might whiz by there. And so here, Linda's actually, she's an artist herself. And you can see here, everything's really artfully kind of put around. She sells artwork, she sells local jams, um, just other like canned things and canned goods. So I highly suggest going into the Elijah Country <laughs> Store and uh, the Zirkle Store as well as, it was super cool. Um, um, I stopped into like in Cabacona, uh, the um, antique store there, and then Gail Manlove. Gail, Gail's right up here front. Um, she spent a morning, thank you so much, probably talking to me longer than you wanted to, <laughs> um, about Hubbard County here. And so it was just, it was super cool. I'd already taken photographs of Hubbard County, but after speaking to Gail, um, that really gave me a better idea of what photographs I was looking at then to include um, into this final exhibit here. Um, yeah, so the final exhibit here, it was like, oh my gosh, I got like, oh, I should say, this was a two-part project. <laughs> the first part of the project was a social media. So I was journeying along, I was showing, like sharing the journey with people. So I was 
um, sharing videos, I was sharing photographs, I was sharing stories like from um, these you know people that I talked to along the way. And you know, I was really hoping to kind of get some engagement from that, and I did actually. There was a few buildings that people helped identify for me. I did actually find out a couple buildings off of abandoned Minnesota. There is a, a Facebook page on that. So then the other part was creating a final body of work and a final body of um, photo documentary work. So sitting down and looking at that at first was like a little bit overwhelming. But I started asking myself, what um, is the story that I'm trying to tell? And more importantly, what was the story that these towns were telling me, you know, that needed to be told. Um, and so what I did was, oh, hey, hey, Tyler. No, no, come on in. Come on in, come on in. Um, so what really started to strike me was all of these common threads that I was finding. Each town is very unique to itself. Um, but there are definitely these common threads that were there, and those common threads were homesteading industries such as logging and the railroads, and then also tourism. So a couple of these industries, like with railroads and logging, once those left these areas, um, and in a lot of these towns such as Horton over here, this is Horton right off of 71, it no longer exists. Like, this is just a pile of eclectic things that <laughs> are for sale. Um, in fact, I didn't even really know if I was in Horton. And I did find out Lillian Herloff hooked me up with um, a lady who owns Horton. And then we debated what side of the highway it was on. Um, so that, that was interesting. And they have like other places like Grace, and this is up in Lake of the Woods area. And that was like right on a railroad you know, station. And really, there's just very few people that still live there. My guess is that maybe the town wouldn't continue to exist if the Lake of the Woods area and larger um, towns around it, um, you know, were not still there and like somewhat thriving. Um, so, oh, like places like Pinewood here. This is Pinewood over here. Um, if it's either east or west. Is that east or west? Waskish. West. West of Waskish. I'm like to the left. Um, so this really, there are a few people that live there, but there's nothing, you know, really left of that town anymore. Um, and so yeah, that's, I found that um, really interesting. So, you know, these somewhat pictures inform us then a little bit of what have happened to these economies. Um, in the case of uh, tourism, Oh, no, let's talk about homesteading first. <laughs> homesteading, and so all of these common threads really had to do like with their, how these towns have become established, you know. Um, and then, of course, like what has happened to them after these industries have pulled out like that. So homesteading is right over there behind you guys there. Um, so a lot of these areas, like in Hubbard County, um, in fact, Gales, your great grandfather is one of the first homesteaders here in Hubbard. Yeah, yeah. and Hubbard um, is still somewhat going. They have a restaurant on the hilltop there. Um, and there are still people that are living there. In the case of Fawns, or they call it the Lost Village of Fawns in Gates Corner, um, if you see those signs right there, that is all that is left of Gates Corner in that Fawns area. This is in the Beltram State Island um, forest. And so, uh, yeah, dates, dates, I'm nervous, can't remember dates. Anyway, when they were homesteading, uh, they ended up having to give the land back to the state because they were unsuccessful with farming it. Um, in fact, in that area, they had to do like dredge huge trenches and stuff, and they really couldn't get the farmland, you know, up to like par. So anyway, that is all that is left of um, those things. It's just these signs that are notating uh, the homesteaders, which is, which is really cool. So, you know, in some cases, there were people that I could talk to, in other cases not. There's fonts that, um, what do you guys call that? Like a, not a knife. That's, I mean, that's a knife. Machete, yeah. <laughs> that's like a machete. Um, the machete, that was, you know, over in fonts. Um, 
And then right in between there, I happened to run into a CCC camp, or it's not camp, but what is that even? That's the, a CCC camp. A camp, yeah. And I was just like taking pictures, going around. I thought it was abandoned. I did see like kind of a car there just getting away. And then Charlie Tucker comes out. He was the DNR site manager. And he was like, oh, hey, I will show you, you know, around into these buildings. And he was the one then that really told me about uh, the homesteading and these signs that I kept seeing everywhere. Because you're like, what is this, you know? And you can only ask Google so much. <laughs> Google does not know everything. Um, so that was really cool, and then this is actually Gates Corner. It's right by Gates Corner, this photograph here. I mean, all Gates Corner was a stop sign and like a four-way stop, and you're like, oh my gosh, how do you make this? <laughs> you know, like, interesting, but this was cool, and I found cool about this is it had a bullet hole in it. So like, that's telling us a little bit about wait, what goes on there, you know? I mean, my guess is probably not my not a lot of you know, like people that are maybe hunting, yeah. um, things like that, and uh, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I was definitely say about that. This, so this is up in Panasse, and this is all the way up in Angle Inlet. And to get to Angle Inlet, that's actually it looks like a little chimney on top, of Minnesota. To get there, you have to go all the way up through Canada and then check back in to the United States by these things called, uh, well, this is Jim Spears, one of the guys here. So this guy here. So it's, it's so crazy. I know, Laura, you commented on Facebook. Yeah. It's so nuts. You're like, what am I doing? So I just call, and who am I calling? So you call in, and you just say, the United States, I'm here, and I'm going to be here. And then on your way back out, you have to call the Canadian border to tell them you'll be traveling through. Um, and this is crazy, and it kind of speaks also, I think, like all of these, you know, so much of the remoteness of these areas. Up here, these people, in order to get their supplies, they have to go all the way down to Wool Road. Things, they only have a very small general store that is there that has supplies. And, you know, some of the resorts and whatnot have supplies. So, um, and if you guys get a chance to look Go over here, Oh, there's like, let's say, oh yeah, right here. Here's their, you know, general store here. And then, um, like this guy at the resort has some chickens going there. And then also like a water bucket. So a lot of these photographs too, I'm really hoping um, that people can see the resilience and self-reliance, not only like just up at the angle, but you know, in a lot of these other rural towns and ingenuity. Um, as well. So yeah, Panasse um, is all the way up there, and I didn't realize, of course, till I got up there, and I look, I'm like, oh, it's an island. <laughs> I'm like, what am I gonna do, swim? Like, over there to go get these photographs? And I'm like, oh, I guess if I don't get, you know, one place, we'll be okay. Uh, but we were able to find a um, guy, Joe, he was awesome, I can't remember his last name right now, and he took me, he kind of gave me a tour like of all the islands, and it's so cool up there, really, it is the end of the road, and then it's just the lake of the woods. So a lot of their landscape is just the water, and like that's how they travel. So they're not just traveling by car, they're more like traveling by plane or boats and things. Uh, so however, he got me over to Panasse, which is a private island now, just privately owned by um, you know, people vacationing or people that are living there. There's a rundown or abandoned resort there, and behind it was the Panasse School, what remains of the school, um, which which is that photograph, then right there. So uh, it was really really cool and um, special that you took that time to you know, take me over there and yeah, show me that. Uh, and and then even like within that, if you look closely, you can see how they built the structure. So they've got this weird system there of like those half logs like in there with cement. Um, so I, I just think that, you know, too kind of speaks to the people, you know, that are living there. Um, yeah, oh, I was way off script now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So along with this, 
then really two what struck me and particularly I started the furthest away up at the angle and kind of worked my way back down to here was just the incredible beauty of these areas and like of northern Minnesota um, and the resources and that they provide and with that then comes like a lot of the tourism and we get that here in Park Rapids and in Hubbard and a lot of these towns in particular the um, over there at the angle inlet they're 100 percent their economy is 100 percent based on tourism um, and then also over in here is Waskish um, this, this is a picture from Waskish and you can kind of see the economic differences then this is also from the Waskish area so these are more like um, vacation homes like on the lake um, and then this is Hackett and then a lot of these um, other ones are from Wheeler's Point so Lake of the Woods area especially right along of course the shoreline it's just it's just like 100% you know tourism which is sustaining um, these people's livelihoods, um, you know, and building their economy. Um, I was gonna say, oh yeah, and then like Coniston down here, they're just kind of right off the highway. A lot of people will like go and um, fish kind of down there, but uh, yeah, you just found, it, found some like quiet, kind of peaceful moments that were there. And I'm like, oh, uh, but oh shoot, I was gonna say something else. So anyway, yeah, so the, the economy up here, and I think it kind of speaks to a lot of these. So ones like that no longer have, you know, that don't have like Ferris here was primarily, this is from Ferris, these railroad tracks here. It was just a railroad station. So like now, you know, there's really nothing, um, you know, there for people, you know, for the economy that is so, um, yeah, that's true. Did you say anything about phone service when phone oh. service first started? And oh, yeah, that's interesting. So you're like, oh, yeah, of course, got to take a picture of a phone. But that's why, you know, one of you are like, yeah, yeah. Take this picture, right? But the reason I took this picture was because this um, was one of the first phone booths up in Angle Inlet. And this became the first phone booth in 18, or 1989, I believe. They did not have phone service up there until the late 1980s. So we're talking very remote. In fact, they have, uh, it didn't make it. I don't know why it didn't make the cut. The artist in me was like, take that photo out. <laughs> they have a one room school classroom there that only goes up to sixth grade. So from seventh grade to 12th grade, all of the students every day have to go down to War Road. And that's an hour and a half down, an hour and a half back. Wow. And guess what? They have to go through Jim's booth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So telephones are still there, and you'll find them too. There's this other cool photo I had just like hanging out in the middle of a beautiful field. <laughs> you know, there's this like phone booth. That's <laughs> like right there. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, that, 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 that is why we have a phone booth. <laughs> and everything seems to be at an angle there, which is fine. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed. And I don't know if it has to do with the ground or with my uh, Oh, and this is probably a good one to pick here. See, like this. I mean, everything. <laughs> Everything's like kind of going that way. And I guess it's yeah. a good one to pick um, because it's unincorporated. What does that mean? I should have kind of started with that. It just means that there's no... Um, local government. So you're not bound then by different ordinances that cities have. Um, and so there's just, within these towns, I did feel like a little bit more sense of freedom. You know, you can do whatever you want to, you know, with your yard, with your house, with, you know, just everything. Uh, however, the towns are still, they do still have to somewhat, not necessarily report, but they're bound to the state and the county. Of course, it's not lawless, although this place was like, woo! You know, you felt like you're like back in the wild west. It's like, this is a photographer's dream. Why does the sun have to be right behind it? There's so many problems. Like, wow. And I kept thinking, I'm going to go back to take pictures of this. And that's one thing I did learn was that if I'm there, I have to take a picture because I, I never went back. And I do have to thank my husband. Um, and I would suggest this for anybody doing a photo documentary, especially like with traveling. If you can find somebody to drive 
for you. <laughs> there, I mean, having to cover so many towns, and particularly like not, you know, like Dorset and Hubbard and other places closer to me, and a few other ones, like I took myself, but bless my husband's heart, he has the patience of a saint. Uh, he would sit in the car for two hours while I talked to somebody. Uh, he was like the driver, well, I was like, stop here, stop there, and a lot of things happened like right off the highway. You know? <laughs> like, like this, you know, like up there, you know, and like honking at me when cars are coming. <laughs> so I also lived because of him. <laughs> I was probably, you know, almost died a few times, but uh, yeah, yeah. So that was that was super awesome. But yeah, so um, yeah, there was so much more that I was gonna say, and I said so many other things. So does anyone have any questions? Yeah, Sam. Um, the beach painting. Yeah. No, I didn't. In fact, um, yep. Yeah, it was actually pretty far away from him. And this is Upper Red Lake, uh, right near Waskish. Yep. And it's like one of the um, areas. Uh, I think that you might be able to put like your boats, you know, into. Which reminds me, another resort um, that I went to. And this was great. I did initially have the cider was on my unincorporated list somewhere and it disappeared. And then I was photographing Macunse. And speaking of towns, like like nothing, you know, there. Like sometimes you look down and sometimes there's like absolutely nothing there. And Macunse was just literally a four-way stop. It was like, how can I make this look interesting? You know? <laughs> but um, the the beauty up there is just really incredible. The forest, and so these other ones I found out later then that Nate Wash was unincorporated. So I went ahead and added um, Nate Wash on there, and it was yeah, Nate Wash is absolutely beautiful in these areas. Um, and this is from in town, there, there's like one strip in town where their main like commerce is happening, and they have you know, school and church. Um, and then I just I loved these scenes here. Just kind of like as I was driving by, like with the um, wind going, I'm really interested in what the structure is here. I don't know um, if it's a sweat lodge or not, or what it is. And then that the field one up there. Um, but yeah, they also have a resort, Pinehurst Resort, and that is they have Twin Lakes, which actually Nato Wash used to be called Twin Lakes, and there was another town that was called Twin Lakes in the middle. Of getting sent not to the right place. Mm -hmm. So nature wash, which actually means smooth sailing. Um, came. And then Makunse means, I believe, black bear, or baby bear, yeah. So I spent a little bit of time talking to the lady at the Pinehurst um, Resort, and like in the store there, and she was the one that told me about um, the baby bear and the different names, and then just kind of like about the area. So they have like a, Twin Lakes is the south and the north lake, and then they have a lot of resorts. Mm -hmm. People just, you know, like having fun. A lot of board wheeling and stuff like that. Yep, Paul? Um, did you find any um, resources for information like cemeteries helpful? Yes. In fact, I'm so glad you asked me that. Uh, because in a lot of towns when I didn't have, you know, much to shoot you, that was my go-to, was a cemetery. Um, and I was making sure that I got a picture of the sign of each town. And in Island, Island Lake, oh my gosh, I could not for the life of me find like something that said Island Lake. And lo and behold, right off the highway, Island Lake Cemetery <laughs> you know, like, was right there. But it was cool. Um, in Clemenston, I had, in, in all of these, I did a little bit of research online. I found on like the histories, there's not a lot on some of these towns, of course. So again, most of my information came from talking to people in these towns. But in Clemenston, um, in the cemetery here, this one's unknown. However, the basically the founders of Clemenston are the first people that settled there. Their headstones are there. And so that was like really a kind of a cool moment, you know. And then I believe when I was over in, uh, is it Beside or Beside? Vesida. Let's go Vesida. Okay. Uh, Vesida um, kind of trying to find information out, 
you know, about the history before I stopped at the, the site of Barn Grill. Mm -hmm. I did kind of look at some of the headstones and you're like, hmm, ones that are there older and maybe looking up those names and have to see if there's any. Did you find information about it? Um, the one for Clemens and I did. I did not. No, I mean for Bethesda. Bethesda. No. no. We have uh, somebody who's in the historical society and might be able to give you some information about it. Oh, cool. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I definitely will. I ended up talking to the lady there at the bar and grill and her, I must have been either great-grandparents or grandparents had owned the bar and grill and the post office used to be across the street from it. And then the post office moved into um, the bar and grill at a certain point. A, a lot of these places don't have post office anymore. But yeah, thanks. Yeah, I was like, oh, I know that building. Um, this one was right by a little, oh, like a little bit out before you get to uh, Lake Roy. So Lake Roy, Roy, Lake. Roy, Roy Lake. And yeah, I'm not sure what it is. I would love to know. So that's a substantial chimney. It is. More yeah. Than, you would think more than a house. Was there a yeah. CCC or something? And you think what? A business or something? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. See there, I couldn't find anything else, you know, in that field. And the foundation was, you know, it was a pretty, you know, good size. But yeah, I'm not sure. But that's far away from that chimney too. It is. I'm yeah. 78 years old, and that chimney was there when I was five. <laughs> really? Oh, cool. Okay. Because we used to go to Roy Lake and go to the cabins there. <laughs> the chimney was there then. Oh wow. So we could wow. Have a long time. You could check with either Menomin or Menomin County Historical maybe could help you. Okay. Or with the um, Wapit? No. Um, who's the Who's the college? The Native College. Waiter Tribal, Waiter, tribal oh, College. Sure. Check with them. Yeah, I bet they would. Because they might have stuff. That's cool that it's still standing. You know, you have like some small why why it is or you know maybe no one's taking it down so but yeah it'd be cool. Did you yeah. stay at any of the little motels or was it all camping? I'm sure you had camping adventures. Oh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did not stay at any motels. We have a vintage camper, so, you know, we don't like hook up water. There's no shower. Showering did happen sometimes. <laughs> I did finally, by the time I went to Lake of the Woods, uh, I bought this, like, shower weird tent you walk into. <laughs> use a thing for it. Uh, or use like a, I don't know, it's just whatever, this Coleman thing. Uh, so yeah, the glamping, glamping as I call it. So yeah, um, I would, yep, just, uh, yeah, camp out. And uh, it's probably a good like eight to 12 hours a day of photographing. Um, and then come back to the campsite starving and, you know, just kind of grill stuff out and get up it. I'm trying to think if there's any funny things. No, just just a lot of photography. I did a ton of cell work <laughs> over the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, oh yeah, so we did, we stayed in primarily uh, state parks. So Franz Jevney, I'm not saying this right, Jeff, help me out here, dude. Jevney? Jevney. Jevney. Um, it's a small state park in Minnesota, and that's, so here's the debt, and if you kind of go, whoop, like right over there, that's right there. And then in Waskish, I stayed at the Big Bog State Park. Mm -hmm. um, and then actually to photograph Lem, which is primarily just an agriculture um, town, there was a little um, stand there with a flag that said, this is where the town of Ween, Ween or Lem used to be. And uh, there was like a picture of where the town had been, and then it was just all agriculture. Um, beautiful like around us. Um, what was pretty rough there? Camping. 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 Uh, yeah. uh, oh, oh yeah, so when I hit Elida and Circle and Lem, and actually when I was over there, 
and I was able to go over to Makunse and Natawash because there are actually circles right here, and then Makunse and Natawash are over here. I went to see Natawash a couple times, um, but yeah, that yeah that really allowed me to be able to kind of inundate myself. Which is another thing. I wish I did have some funny painting stories. <laughs> Bothering me, what is with the green wall man? What is that? Oh, this is from here. So this oh. is right there. What I liked about that was is um, it said to me like at some point, you know, I don't know, it was like a saloon or people were tying their horses up, you know, and the fact like that it was still there, of some kind. Yeah, I just had legs. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Oh yeah, I don't know what that is. And I like that it just you know, in some of these places, just like time stopped. You know, just boop, and like that was it. Um, and you know, I guess like in the end too, like nature just you know reclaims everything. You know, so at a certain point, you know, everything. Yep. Yeah. So I want to yeah. know what this is. <laughs> Hover. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> this is. Oh, and it's right next to there. Yeah, that's a recent addition. <laughs> it is confirmed. Recent addition. I think, Luann, were you saying it's for the bus stop? It must be for a bus stop. Okay. For the school bus. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it was for the school bus. It was not there when I was there. <laughs> yeah, and some of those houses in Hubbard, I didn't realize too. Yeah, we're actually really old and we kept up with this. No. I didn't know these Oh, some of these houses that you pointed out were actually really old, but they've been kept up. By the way, Laura, can I yeah. take this yes. break for a small commercial announcement? Yeah. <laughs> Gail is going to be speaking about the history of um, oh. Oliver Perry Manla and oh. the Harvard Prairie for the Historical Society in May. Last Monday night of May, she will be speaking at in the basement of Northwood Bank. Oh, fabulous! Oh, I have to go. Listen, <laughs> yeah, Laura. I was just gonna say, you know, from what I, you know, from knowing you, that you're so open and curious and humble, and um, you know, just not uh, assuming anything, any prior knowledge going in. And also the fact that you're from Iowa, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm wondering if these things felt like uh, not just your personality, but as being a relative outsider to the state, if that felt as an advantage to you kind of going in because you didn't have to know anything. You know, you didn't right. no one expected you to know anything. Right. And did you notice that at all? Did you share that information with people that you, or did you say I'm from Park Rapids or I'm from? <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's that's a great yeah, question. You had to keep both that end part of the question. It kind of depended where I was. Someone was like, I live in Huntersville. No, <laughs> you know, like I'm rural too. Yeah, or, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's a really great question. Um, and that's really funny because. Oh, 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 oh. So, Joe, Joe was totally right. I was like, this hanging system was almost brilliant. I'll go the black season so was lightweight. And I just did like sticker thing. This performance art. <laughs> here and you know we drive like out in these rural areas it's like it's so cool and crazy to me how some of these really old buildings you know are still here and I, I don't remember any of that like you know there might be an old farmhouse or something like that um, in Iowa but as far as these you know flat you know sided buildings things like this and um, Iowa City and um, you know larger town like Des Moines it's just 
this is so cool. Like some things are still so, you know, very vintage, like time has just stopped and slowed down. Um, so I don't know if that added like a visual interest, you know, for me. Um, but I do, I, that's a good question too about like knowing more about these towns. So I would learn like a little bit about them, but I didn't want to know like too much before I went into them because I did want to go in with an open mind. I didn't, it's easy, I think, as an artist, you get this preconceived idea. Like I find myself being like, oh, this photo is going to be in the final. <laughs> and I'm like, stop, stop. Because then at that point, I'm not letting the project speak to me. And I'm not, you know, truly like, whoop, just doing this documentary where you're like recording things versus recording what you're wanting to record, you know? And so, yeah. And I, I think I fought with that like throughout the whole thing and even like, you know, putting things up. So, does that answer that? I think so. Okay. I think also, you know, because probably many people in the room are from Minnesota mm -hmm. and or have lived here long enough um, to these, some of these places seem really familiar, but it's like, oh, I've never stopped there. Right. I've driven past. I've, and I and just, um, I'm wondering how much of a beginner's mind uh, you, you use both to make connections with people and to feel free to stop by and to walk in and right. um, if it's just you, I think a lot of it is who you are, you know, oh, your nice. interest in people and places. So, you know, so I think some of the thoughts I'm having. Yeah, you know, and I, I think you're actually probably right. Besides the places I know just like around me from living here in Cabacona, um, really all of these other places I, I did not know at all. So, you know, not familiar with, like I hear, you know, back there you're like, I've driven by this place since, you know, I was, you know, like young. And so, and I think that when that does happen to you, when you're seeing things for the first time, you're seeing like all of these things, you know, like when you go on a vacation, like first time I went to New York City, I'm like, this is so crazy, you know, like everything, or, you know, wherever you are, everything looks so new. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe that did like kind of help out too, because when you're passing things every day, so like in Hubbard, I just walked around and I found so many more things, you know, that I had things in my mind that I thought I'd take photos of, and yeah, I just kind of had to release, you know, what I knew about it. So. You probably missed the whole other road on the other side of the thing. Oh, I did. I walked them all. <laughs> <laughs> Once in the winter, and it was way more pleasant in the spring. <laughs> yeah, Paul, did I see a question? I'm just going to follow up on, on what yeah. she was talking about there, and, and perhaps there hasn't been enough time between the end of this project. I'm going to ask you about uh, yeah. when you came in before today's show and you got to see everything on the wall. You know, um, is there? I know you went in with very, with the appropriate amount of expectations to try to measure that. But uh, is there anything that you kind of surprises you, or when you came in, you see when you see the whole body of work, was there something that kind of stood out that you didn't have? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's a good one. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I think part of, you know, what I'd spoken about earlier, that revelation of like these common threads, you know. So I think like as I was putting it together, it's almost like everything was kind of new again, you know, because I'm kind of trying to, you're trying to put pieces together in a thoughtful way that's reflecting the documentary also find the artist <laughs> like this one doesn't go you know with this one um but yeah that's interesting i don't know oh uh, yeah like if i saw anything hmm. i'm gonna have to go back to him then that's a good question i like stumpers well you were you were actually answering that okay. as you were uh, answering her question anyway, okay. so we're good i will say one thing that when i went back and looking at some photos um, when i was doing this uh, from Linda's in Zirkel, uh, you can't see it in here, but there's a couple dogs here in front. There's this one dog they call No Name. He just showed up out of nowhere. <laughs> and when I was looking at the photograph here, there's this dog that looks exactly the same. <laughs> 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 and it was like too small. <laughs> 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 I 
And I called Linda and alerted her of this. You know? Is this like a Stephen King like pet cemetery? You know? And she was like, oh yeah. And by the way, she does have puppies now. <laughs> and I guess one more thing I, that I did forget to say that when putting this together, um, so it was kind of with these common threads, but then I also, it was really important to me to honor the people that you know, took time to speak to me and, you know, really helped inform, you know, what I was photographing um, and, yeah, and just really giving that extra presence, you know. And a lot of this was about giving a presence to the rural and incorporated towns, or the, to the rural towns in Minnesota, but then also exploring this whole idea of, like, what is unincorporated, you know. I could second what Laura's been saying that I grew up here and I've seen a lot of these things mm -hmm. driving by mm -hmm. and I like pictures but I did not have a picture to look at so I appreciate your making me look at pictures yeah. of what I've been seeing all my life. Uh, also a question, does the project itself include text either by the village or by the picture? Does it, what do you mean? Are you going to put text with the project? Oh, yeah, my attempt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm like I've got to put something up. For the exhibit, no, because I really wanted, um, well, you want the photos to kind of speak. You want to invite the viewer in to look at the photographs and to, you know, kind of with an open mind, just like how they're wanting to interpret them, what that's saying to them. But I also wanted these photographs to speak to each other, so hence no borders around them. Um, and. I, I don't know, I kind of felt like the text might interrupt that. Uh, at the same time with this being said, it, yeah, I was really torn on that, because it would be cool, like, oh, where is this, you know, where is that? Um, a longer term project, you know, I might, for an exhibit purposes for the work, I think no. Um, well, the history you've researched, since you've already oh, done a lot right, of work. Oh, yeah, so you, a You've longer, done a lot of work on it. Yeah, yeah, so a longer term project, um, and as I put in my grant, a longer term project, so, you know, years out um, would be to put together you know a book um, and I'd like to continue to do this work so just in northern Minnesota um, you know to continue doing the unincorporated towns too in northern Minnesota so yeah those are a couple things so that, that would be cool to put together and you know just as like Jeremy knows we all want to put ourselves like you know photographers especially for you know photo documentary that would be something I'd look out to in the part of the future. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Where did you find that artistic wood fire? <laughs> this is in Benedict. Oh my Bened gosh. Yes, and so he, Lindy's, is in Benedict. Um, yeah. So right across the street, there is a gas station there, and there is just a wood pile, you know, kind of sitting there, and it has all of these really. Vicki and I might have to bid against each other. Oh. <laughs> Good luck, you're after me. No. Did you bid it? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Have you tried any of these in the white? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that. So many of these, um, oh, like the, um, the teepee there and the boat. That one to me was just like screaming black and white. Yeah. And, and a lot, I, I prefer, like, I would prefer to see that one in black and white. Um, and yeah, and that's interesting too, because when I did first start doing um, photography, it was on film and it was black and white. And that's, you know, where I started the photo documentary. So I don't know, like, unconsciously, at a certain point, I was like, not shooting in black and white, but you know, if you shot photography, you know what I mean. It's like, you see in color, you see in black and white. Um, yeah, there's definitely a bunch of these, and it's like, oh, especially with buildings and textures, you're like, this would be so cool in black and white. Like, can I mix black and white with the color? <laughs> you know? So yeah, yeah, that would be just in black and white in general for maybe doing one like that for an incorporated would be a cool part of it. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone have any other questions? <laughs> so what were you feeling when you took the picture of Oh, the cross here? Of the cross. 
Yeah. Yeah. So this was in um, Pennington, and um, it was right down the street. It's like kind of like right off the highway, and there was um, this church there. And then what I really loved about this, um, yeah, I think you know, of course, there's symbolism, yeah, but at the same time, you know, with these lights, there's two different, you know, kind of light bulbs shining down. Um, on it, but back there, you know, of course, the lights stay like out, but at the same time, uh, you know, I guess you could read into that. Um, so it's all kind of different discussions. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Like, there, there's one for the documentary itself, you know, it's telling us something about that street or that place, you know. Um, but then, uh, you know, I also think if you're looking at it through an artistic lens, you know, that it, it, that it could speak. You know more. I don't know. Even maybe more about you know religion or you know where it is today or yeah. Oh, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. That's another good tough question for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions or? Wow. Well, thank you guys so much. <laughs>